Welcome back to Yellow Card Vanguard. I'm your host, Toku from It's Toku TV on Twitch. Throughout the week, I'm streaming Vanguard on my Twitch channel. We'll be building decks, playtesting, and just having a grand old time, so be sure to swing on by. With new Clan Classroom reveals coming out every day, you know what that means. It's time for a new chapter of Clan Collection Course. I want to preface this video and the entirety of the series by saying that many of these lists are entirely conceptual and surface deep and will need your own playtesting to fine tune. But each of these will aim to provide a way of thinking on how to take your new support in Clan Collection 3 and 4 and put it into a working deck. They won't all be optimized, but I believe they will be a good baseline to build off of. Welcome to Clan Collection Cores. Royal Paladins finally got some lovin', and holy moly is this support good. Even ignoring our new boss unit in Salome, the new Grade 1 and the Grade 2 cards are amazing enough to go into any deck alongside the other Jewel Knights. The new cards provide the clan such a strong early game that even a deck like Thingsaver Dragon can make even good use of it. Let's break down the new cards together and take a look at the list I brewed up. Here's our new queen, the one the only leading jewel knight Salami, I mean Salome. As a vanguard, at the end of the battle that it attacked, you can counterblast one to call from hand a three jewel knights to occupied rear circles. If the opponent is grade three or greater, you can also soul blast four to re-stand herself. On either the vanguard circle or the rearguard circle, when another unit is placed on her circle, you can counterblast one to give that unit 10k and a drive for a very very solid card for the jewel knight archetype. One of the key things to note about Salome is that the superior call from hand isn't restricted to your opponent being a grade 3, only the restand is. So if you're able to put your opponent through the grinder from grade 1 to 2, you could actually look towards knocking their lights off with this effect. Obviously, I think Ashley as first ride is better for this kind of idea, but it means that you have two good grade 3 ride targets. Riding Salome over Salome is also just so juicy as well. Becoming a 3-3 drive vanguard and being a vanguard that restands itself rather than rewriting from hand or anywhere else means any initial crit triggers we find are doubly effective. The only flaw I can see from Salome is a requirement to call over occupied circles. Now, all the JKs have really good effects when another unit is placed over them, but in terms of card advantage, not really plussing. The new grade 2 is Dogmatized Jewel Knight Sybil. On either circle, van or rear, when Sybil attacks, you can soul in a grade 2 or less from hand to draw a card. And on either circle, when another unit is placed on her circle, you can superior call a grade 2 or less Jewel Knight from the top 3 of your deck and stack the rest on the bottom. Sybil's first skill is only a filter, but built soul for strong effects that are required by the grade 3s. I'd love for her to gain some power as well, similar to Rail, but that would probably be to her second effect though is gas and makes her your ideal grade 2 ride. Albeit having a little bit of RNG, getting a free plus 1 from riding her is amazing, and every target you find has valid strong effects. And finally, the new grade 1 is Fruiting Jewel Knight Eunice. At the end of the battle that she boosted, you can return a normal unit from our drop zone to the bottom of our deck to soul charge 1 and you may bounce her back to hand. Then, on the van or the rearguard circle, when another unit is placed on this unit circle, you can retire an opponent's rearguard in the same column. If you did not retire, you can draw one. The only way to make units better is to have her first effect work on attack as well, but that would be asking for too much. The fact that we already have a recurable source of boost, soul charge, and deck fill is already amazing. I always said, to play Royal Paladin, you need to follow two steps. Step one is to go first, and step two is to ride Morbidus. But now, with the introduction of units, we have four more nutty grade 1 ride targets. Fantastic card, and her aesthetic is also fantastic. Let's run over our win con and show how our list plays towards it. We look to completely take control of the game with our very high tempo strategy. Multiple superior calls between Ashley and Sybil, and a lot of incidental power from Rail. Going into grade 3, we ideally ride Ashley, and we can either go for an aggressive playstyle of having Ashley go over Sybil for a superior call, hopefully finding another Sybil or Rail, then getting 5 attacks turn 1 at grade 3 with Ashley's skill to superior call 2 over Sybil and Rail for more powerful attacks. If we're looking for a more conservative play, we can call Morbidus or Eunice on the Force Marker and attack for 18k, then from Ashley, superior call Rail and Eunice to the column that it was on, 
get the draw one from the skill of being played over, then the new rail and units refill our soul, and we can have the units that we just called from actually skill bounce back to hand. Insane farming potential. On our next turn, we want to rewrite Salome over Ashley to gain the crit on our restanding Vanguard, and then just go to town, read the cards to their effects. We want to get that board reset and all the bonuses of calling over Jewel Knights. If we have enough soul, we can even call more Ashleys for even more multi-attacks. The deck is looking very sweet. So with the game plan out of the way, let's go into the list. The deck is very, very streamlined onto that Jewel Knight name, so it's an easy deck to just put four copies of every Jewel Knight into. Four copies of Ashley is our ideal grade 3 ride and our rear guarding multi attack enabler. Four copies of Salome for our restanding Vanguard finisher, also enabling multi attack because why not? What's a force deck if not attacking five or more times, right? Four copies of Sybil as our ideal grade 2 ride. The fact that this card is not a hard once per turn is incredible and incredibly hilarious. The more copies of her you have in a turn, the crazier your turn gets if you get those RNG rolls. 4 copies of Rail for the name, for the ability to cycle units back into the deck, and her ability to act as the pseudo force marker. Just a really strong unit to slap other units on. And finally, our Grade 1 Jewel Knights. 4 copies of Eunice. We can ride her for Grade 1, ride over her, and if our opponent doesn't offer something as sacrifice, we get a free draw. And even if they do, and it's something important like Craven Claw or Reno, we get to immediately snipe it. Finally, 4 copies of Morbidus. Now with more ways to soul charge, through Sybil and Eunice, won't be using her first skill too much except for a way to dump excess counterblast into Salome's power going into a final turn. But she's once again one of our best grade 1 rides and one of our best early game attackers. Now, with the Jewel Knights accounted for, we're left with 9 slots in the main deck. I personally believe that 4 mandatory slots for this deck is Knight of Going Alone Haro. We have 2 ways of superior calling grade 2s in this deck between Ashley and Sybil, and if we're unable to superior call those units onto a force marker, unfortunately, that Sybil or Rail won't attack for meaningful numbers. Boosting with Harald and then using him to buff whichever grade 2 JK was called not only gives us a trigger's guard worth of power, but also refills our soul, a very much needed resource in the long term of our game plan. In the other 5 slots, we can be whatever flavor of spice we want, but I wanted to ensure that I get the proper first ride being Ashley, so I opted to run 3 copies of Sisyllus for the grade 3 search ability. And finally, in the last two slots, the Spice, Great Sage Baron. So before I talk about why I run Baron, I want to talk about why I don't run Liberant. If it hasn't occurred to you yet, our deck has little in the way of counter charge, in fact, zero. Now luckily, we also use very little counter blast, so that is a bonus, but the notion still stands that because we have no counter charge to work with, every counter blast that we use has to really matter, it has to really be high impact. Salome's counterblast want to multi-attack and restand, that is high impact. That is a good use of one counterblast. Ashley's counterblast one to give whatever unit appears on top of her a crit, that is also high impact and a good use of that one counterblast. Liberod's counterblast one to superior call a grade two. Okay, I don't feel very excited about that. Liberod's soul blast one to superior call a grade two. Okay. Ashley uses a Soul Blast to Superior Call during the battle phase. So now we look at Baron. When our unit attacks, we can have it gain 5k for the battle. Then if said unit was grade 3 or greater, we can Counter Blast 1 and retire Baron to give it a crit for the turn. This is high impact. This can win games. Furthermore, in the off chance that we have to ride Salome over Salome, Baron is another way to give our Salome a crit and two triple drive swings already starting at 2 crit is frightening. Going into our trigger lineup. Yeah, it's fairly standard. 8 crit, 4 draw sentinels, 4 heal guardians. Not much to prattle on here about. We want the draw sentinels because we need that guaranteed guard and we play 8 crit just to make our units that much more threatening. So with my version of the pure jewel knights presented, how else can we take the support? Well, for starters, if you really do so wish, go ahead and play Lever on. Leverod is still in fact, despite being low impact, an extra copy of either Sybil or Rail. If Soul still seems to be an issue, consider Diaconnected Dragon 2. Just a simple on place if we have another unit in the same column, Soul Charge 1 and can sometimes attack for big numbers. But finally, if you really want to get the gears turning, take the new Jewel Knight support and put it into Thingsaver Dragon. No wait, don't close the video, I promise this isn't my delusional copium bias. The early game from the Jewel Knight support is very strong, 
and could be what's needed to bridge the gap between your Grade 1 and Grade 2 game to your second turn of Grade 3, where Thing Saber will outscale many decks. With many methods of Soul Charging now as well, between Eunice and Sybil, we won't be in a situation of having to choose between Morbidus Counterboss 1 for Soul Charge, or Thing Saber Dragon's Counterboss 1 Superior Call BBS, or Ashley's skill to gain a crit. Thing Saber Dragon being able to recycle heals back into the deck also provides artificial counter charge, and once we hit turn 5 or 6, our scaling just goes through the roof due to trigger compression, and we always have a resource loop between the Jewel Knights fueling the Blaster Blade Seeker and Thing Saber Dragon back into the deck, as well as its soul, and Thing Saber Dragon using the soul for the rewrite and superior call. In conclusion, holy shit is this support good. This is definitely what Royal Paladin needed and you'd be hard pressed to find a Royal Paladin deck that doesn't look towards playing the Grade 2 and Grade 1 Jewel Knight package. So in that sense, it is a huge win to the clan. Salome is also a very strong boss unit and payoff for the new Royal Paladin support and in an unbiased comment, could make waves in the current meta due to a fairly low resource yet aggressive game plan. In any case, this has been it for me for this episode of Clan Question Cores. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this and like the video as it helps motivate us to keep the gears going. Leave a comment down below and every little bit helps the channel. This has been Toku from the Yellow Card Vanguard channel. Toku out.